All right, what's up, YouTube? This is Visa Trade. Um, as you can see, I got a project going on. It's a uh, basically it's a Geo Bigfoot that I've converted into a GSR cruiser, uh, more or less. I mean, the front brake's kind of stupid because it's the old school one. But uh, let me just uh, give you an insight on what it uh, requires. Um, it's taken quite a bit of money to figure this shit out, but this is a seven inch bolt that goes through here. I think it's a five eighths. Um, it comes with a six, but I found that it needs a seven because I have to put spacers like right in here. Um, these spacers are required, or you could probably just get the GSR spacers um, for it, but uh, the GSR spacer, I wasn't sure what, which one to get. Um, it puts on, shit, I don't know, probably, uh, I don't know, like an inch of it. And um, it's it's a pretty easy conversion. The hardest part was trying to figure out the situation uh, with the uh, sprocket adapter. Um, I ended up using these because they were sold out of the um, actual spacers for, for the GSR on uh, Dave's Motors at the time I was ordering. So I ended up just using hardware store stuff, and I think I probably made it a little more bulletproof than it originally was. Um, I should probably put spacers on this side of the, the wheel as well, but I decided I'd put a spacer inside of there which helps it um, on these spacers as well uh, to space out the difference onto these so that the sprocket can go on top. Um, it was kind of challenging finding the right uh, screws to put into the sprocket. Um, I ended up having to chop off the top half of this thing. Um, in order to do it and I had four of them but I lost two because I was only using two for a while and it was kind of a nightmare because my rim decided to crack in half several times uh, it didn't like riding downhill much for some strange odd reason so I decided to buy a billet one and these rims are way tougher and way more awesome um, the uh, whole chain system is basic is very easy to do it comes uh, stock with these two bolts uh, in the thing, and that's really all you need. Um, people will tell you that you need the, the back third one, but it's really not necessary as long as you tighten these up pretty good. Um, another thing, tools are really important. Um, people will tell you that it takes forever to get one of these uh, tires off, and it's just it's not true. You need a 24 millimeter socket. Um, with an adapter for a smaller one if you don't have, you know, the bigger size. Um, also get one of these. People will tell you it's a stupid wrench to have, but it works great for getting off stuff that strips and uh, whatnot. Uh, this is a pretty small one right here, um, and it works great. I haven't had any troubles with it. It's an eight inch. Um, let's see, what else? I'll uh, I'll take some pictures because I'm not sure how this video is going to turn out. It's on like a crappy track phone, um, but I can upload it. I know I can upload it to YouTube because uh, I have conversions and stuff. Um, the chain, I went with a 47 mil or a 47 link uh, chain, but I ended up cutting it by one, or um, yeah, cutting it by one. I guess you'd say. Um, the 47 seems to work fine. It's just you, if you get a, a smaller one, I'm not sure if it's going to fit. I, I have a the socket or the the sprocket size is a 82. Um, so if you want to go a smaller sprocket, obviously you're going to want a smaller chain. Uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, this is the uh, how to do a conversion on this thing. I'll take pictures of it, like I said, as I'm putting it back together. It's just I. My inner tube decided to 
uh, kind of screw around with this uh, valve stem, decided to start leaking, and I had to ride around on a flat tire, and it wasn't very fun. Uh, the uh, This thing, I didn't mount on correctly. I just put this big old nut on the end of this thing, which just decides to keep this flat, so it doesn't uh, go up and down. But you are supposed to have... Oh, uh, here's my next project. This thing's interesting. Um, it's like a, it looks like this, and it goes on this thing, and this goes under the tank, and it'll hold the whole back end on, and this part is barely even necessary. I have this broken one for a Bigfoot that, I mean, you can just, you can stick uh, zip ties through there to hold it on as long as it's held on the other way. My next project is putting this thing on a G on an actual uh, super big foot, and my friend says I'm not going to be able to do it for a year, but I tend to disbelieve that. This is uh, I thought this was a two-speed transmission when I saw it on this engine over here for a pocket bike, but actually what it does is I don't know if you can see it, but the inner part, if it's going over the top like a, a normal, you know, the normal direction, it'll spin that the other way. So that's why I got a, a, a super big foot frame. A super big foot frame, I guess, has two bolts as well. So it should go pretty smoothly. We'll see. Anyways, I'm going to reassemble it, and hopefully that valve stem won't be giving me problems. Uh, hope you enjoyed watching. Uh, thanks. Bye. All right, forgot to mention this part. This is a real pain in the ass. I got the the hub all together, but um, without the GSR spacer, and I'm starting to think maybe it's one inch and a half because when I was starting this out, I tried to just put it on, but it was hitting the bottom side as this went around um, with the top of the sprocket screws. So... <sighs> this is a pain in the ass because these spacers won't go through this, the sprocket. They're too big for the sprocket. And I tried to explain this to my friends, and this is why it takes so long to get the damn rim back on. Is because I have to put this on um, perfectly straight when I put it back on. Oh, I just realized something. I did. Anyways, um, so that... I can put that on top, but I have to have a straight uh, Allen. I can't have these, I think. I think you might be able to use these, but you won't be able to get it very tight on there unless you have a T-wrench. Um, this, this is a T-wrench. I'll use it for a, a, a spark plug puller, but that's a T-wrench. Um, I usually use his T-wrenches, and then you can you know, put it on when you do that. But the trick is, is if I put this one back on, and it's, it's difficult to show because I don't have three hands. Like try octopus or something. But this, like, it has to, you got to make sure that goes in perfectly straight and doesn't start screwing around. Um, but I'll show you. You know, it'll go in. You can get it in there. And when it spaces on, it's, you know, it's got enough room, enough clearance between the engine mount and the uh, sprocket top. But if you screw it around, and especially if you reseal it, these uh, 
these spacers will fall out right underneath the sprocket and then it's a real pain in the ass because you got to take the whole sprocket off again yeah <sighs> anyways yeah that's a little nightmare if you don't have a uh, stock spacer but yeah i think these are actually they hold up quite a bit better having the uh the one of the spacers on the bottom and then the nut on the top uh like you probably saw in the uh, pictures all right thanks so the thing I was forgetting that I sort of just went, oh, is that uh, this thing in the middle of this bearing, uh, I kind of forgot to put it in there, and it's really important. Uh, it makes sure that your bearings don't explode from being pushed in too much. Uh, it's really a bummer when you explode bearings inside a billet. It takes forever to drill them out with a Dremel. Just as a side note, I hope nobody's done that too much. All right. I noticed the problem with the valve stem. Uh, let's see if I can see it. Yeah. See that uh, the little rubber piece in there? You want to try to pull that thing up as far as you possibly can. Um, I do it with uh, these long-ass needle nose pliers, but I think you could probably just do it with a regular set. Um. That's probably what happened when I put it back together. I didn't really try to do that at all. So it probably just got all screwy. And when it was, uh, I was kind of messing with it because it was leaking and I was wondering why. And well, I guess that's probably why. All right, so I got it back together. Um, I tried to go down there and fill it, but it still had the air leak. <sighs> Don't use slime unless you're really impatient. Like me. <laughs> Anyways, a um, few things I forgot to mention. Uh, this engine I accidentally bought is a um, geo engine, but the bottom is different. It's a, uh, what is it? Um, okay, the, the normal Bigfoot one is a G14, a GZ25 N14, and this one is a GZ25 N23. The top end is the same, pretty much everything is the same, except for some reason the engine spins the other way when you put a different bottom on it. Also, it'll come with um, a flywheel, which you can put the clutch directly on, and um, it'll just bolt right into the uh, engine mount for a, a, Geo, uh, a GSR Cruiser. Um, let's see. Oh, there's an exhaust tube on stocks uh, or on stock uh, frames. You're gonna have to cut that off with a Dremel tool or a hacksaw. Uh, I think you could do it with a hacksaw. I don't know. I use a Dremel tool. Uh, the uh, the chain you want to lube with uh, Triflo, never use uh, WD-40, it doesn't work so good and the chain won't like you. Um, this is my uh, sort of retrofitted back end, see the uh, tank sort of just flops down on that thing. It works alright and it's easier to work on, but honestly I wish I would have done it the right way. Alright, I think that's about all you need to see. So. I will put the video together and throw it on YouTube whenever I can. Hope you enjoyed watching. Uh, feel free to leave any comments telling me I'm an idiot or uh, that I shouldn't be converting go-peds or, you know, whatever. Anyways, all right. Uh, take care.